Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever. Today, I finally have my hands on the Wave 7 of Masters of the Universe Origins. Seems like this one's been a really long time coming, I've had a really hard time uh, finding these figures, and finally got every one of them. Big shout out to my brother for finding most of these at his target. It seems like it's been a really fun time to be a Masters of the Universe fan, there's just all sorts of cool things happening. Everything from a new season of the CGI series on Netflix, which is better than I thought it would be for sure. And of course, we have all sorts of information about the potential live action movie. I've been a little under the weather this week, so my video output's not been uh, quite as high as it usually is. But I am looking to expand my giant ranking list for Masters Universe Origins. I had the whole thing written and held off because I kept thinking I would find these figures at any time or that Big Bad would ship them to me. It does appear there's been quite a delay and when Mattel actually thought that these would be in customers' hands, so probably pandemic related when it comes to those delays. Before we begin today though, I do ask that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We do all sorts of great Masters of the Universe content here on the channel, and this is definitely the place to be if you're a Masters fan. There's not enough of that kind of content out there, and we've got to stick together. Also, be sure to like the video if you would, or if you feel we deserve it. Uh, it really does help the channel out a lot. It helps us to grow. The first figure we'll be looking at today is Stratos. And if you feel that there's something a little off in your brain about his colors, well, you're not wrong, because these are his original mini-comic colors. We're going to be seeing Mattel do a lot of that, and it's a great way for them to, of course, repurpose sculpts and get popular characters back out there. So this was how Stratos appeared in a lot of the early mini-comics. It's kind of a weird look, particularly because he kind of just looks like a bare-chested man flying around with blue underwear. But let's go ahead and look at the back. Something that I'm never, ever going to stop complimenting are these incredible pieces of art that are on the backs of these cards. I mean, it's just amazing just how many new pieces of art we have commissioned just for this series alone. Powerful, agile, and a natural leader, the mighty Stratos battles evil all over Eternia. You have this incredible looking sea creature here and him and He-Man teaming up. This artwork makes that mini comic uh, kind of color scheme look really cool, so I think that helps. Down here, you also have some little cues about how to put the wings on the arms. Of course, all of these figures are coming with the same mini comic, which is the Masters Universe Challenge of Jitsu. Love these things. They do a great job on them. They're extremely consistent and fun to look at. The artwork is just spectacular. They also do a great job of bringing together all the characters in this wave. Of course, Stratos is in his traditional colors here. Why did they put me wings in a plastic bag? Urgh. I can't get it open. Oh. What? I really, really like this figure. I think it's turned out very well, but it's definitely an acquired taste, more aimed towards the hardcore fans of Masters that have familiarity with that early artwork. Everything's just, you know, a little off compared to what it would usually be. Uh, just to kind of get your head right back in the frame of reference for Stratos, you can see here that he's usually got the gray fur and the kind of light baby blue wings and uh, the red harness of course is the same but there's even a slight difference there even the tones on the face are slightly different but what's interesting to me is i kind of end up liking the kind of darker flesh tone over here and the darker beard than this lighter one over here we might as well go ahead and test it and here he is with it switched out and me personally i think that this actually improves the looks of that regular stratos even though the look is definitely an acquired taste I think that the figure is very effective for the visual it's trying to convey. I also think that it feels especially solid. This is something that I believe Mattel are really doing a great job on improving as the line goes on. These guys feel so much more sturdy and the joints feel so much better than that original first Wave 1 review that I did years ago. Prices also seem to be going up on these guys. With most of them skewing more towards the $17 mark, it seems, for a lot of online listings. From the back, the figure has his cool jet pack. Uh, it's always funny to me when Stratos just has like boots, even though they kind of look like they're a part of his body. So it's always a real funny thing, but that's just a part of the character's look. Uh, Stratos is always kind of an enigma to me in that way. The flesh tone uh, also makes him look quite a bit like a luchador. So he kind of just looks like uh, more of a generic wrestling figure this way. Definitely, this is not my preferred version of Stratos. This figure was made to be a throwback to that old artwork. We'll definitely look at articulation just real quick. The head can go up and down, and there's a lot of range with it. There's a hinge right there at the shoulder. There is a rotation at the elbow. There is a single joint hinge right here. 
There is a hinge at the wrist. You can take it all the way around if you wish. There is a rotation at the waist. He can sort of do the splits pretty well right there. The leg can go up, and it's a lot better than it used to be, it seems. You have a single joint hinge at the knee. It has a rotation. There is a rotation at the calf. There is a hinge at the ankle, ankle rocker. And with only a very moderate amount of posing and adjustment, you can get some very wide stances that he can hold without a display stand. Uh, articulation is going to be the same for all these guys, except if I mention that there's a slight difference in the build of the figure. Even though I don't have a version that uses this exact same paint scheme, I do have the Masters of the Universe Classics version in his regular paint scheme, just so you can see the kind of sculptural similarities and things of that nature. Uh, they look pretty cool together. Definitely more of a classic guy myself, but that's okay. I do wish he'd come with an accessory beyond his removable wing things for his wrists there. They look good, but I really think they could have afforded to put a little ray gun or a staff or something in there. Overall, I really like this guy. He's probably the one that's selling the least well from the wave, just because he is not the traditional Stratos that I think people know and love, but he's a heck of a lot more traditional looking anyway in terms of the costume than the one from the CGI show that's just come on. So I guess that's something. I, I do like him, and for me, being a hardcore Masters fan and loving that early artwork, uh, then he definitely serves that purpose. But if you're not into that, you could easily skip this guy, but he's still pretty cool for what he is. The next figure we'll be looking at is the Sorceress. Here she is on the blister card. She's looking very accurate to that original toy, while also taking some cues from the mini comic art and the cartoon. Heroic Guardian of Castle Grayskull. On the back, we can see a little bit about how you can spread the wings out, you can use the staff, and also this incredible artwork. Imbued with magical abilities from the Pool of Power, the wise sorceress watches over Eternia when it needs He-Man for protection. From a couple of characters we've actually not gotten yet down here, so I'm really excited about that. And a really great shot of Castle Grayskull, so let's go ahead and get her out of the packaging. And here she is to command Castle Grayskull while also ordering He-Man to save the Popeye's chicken, we have the Sorceress, and if you get that last reference, you've been in this fandom for a while. <laughs> anyway, though, here she is. Uh, it is so great to see the Sorceress finally done up in the regular standard colors, and I have something really crazy to say about this Sorceress figure. Yes, I'm a hardcore Masters fan. I've been collecting all the toys for years, but um, I never, ever did get a Sorceress in any version of the toy line that was just her in her traditional colors. I know, scowl, anger. It just never happened. Uh, I had a hard time ever finding the one in classics. Uh, it just never worked out for me. So it's great to finally, after having Temple of Darkness sorceresses for all these years, to have one in the traditional colors. So this is new for me. The loveliness of that original figure really extends to this one as well. And when I say original figure, I mean, they've already released this sculpt before, but it was packed with Castle Grayskull. Now there, she was in her Temple of Darkness Sorceress outfit, which is just a white version of this. The sculpt is exactly the same as it was. You can see that not only do they have the orange and the baby blue and things, but they also have the slight bit of shading, kind of tan or blush on the cheeks there. You can see that they have the beak and eyes painted here of the eagle headdress that she wears. You can also see that they've done a great job of getting a really nice paint alignment on all the little decals on her chest, on the back, her wings even have this beautiful spray on them. And of course they can be spread out like this. She has her really cool staff there. And I just think it's really lovely looking, especially set off by this awesome kind of metallic gold or orange up there. This is one of the most eye-catching figures in the entire line so far, and I say that without hesitation. She utilizes a whole lot of the sculpting that we'd seen on other females before in the line. What I said earlier was slightly inaccurate about it being the exact same sculpt as the one that came with my Castle Grayskull, because even though they fixed it later in the Castle Grayskull version, I got one of the earlier versions that didn't have the correct knees. These knees look really, really great compared to what they were before. And speaking of comparisons, this is as good a time as any to bring out that original. And you can see the original one that came with my Castle Grayskull has those really weird cut-off knees right there. Uh, don't exactly look human. I was so glad that they fixed that up. Uh, as for the head sculpts here, you can see that the sculpts are the same, but man, what a difference in paint with this being much more ethereal and light-skinned. And this being like, I guess, the sorceress went on like a summer vacation. Uh, she went to Cancun. She came back. She was rested and refreshed. Uh, so it's just, it's great to see them side by side. 
Uh, I'm very happy to have both of them, honestly, because I think that they're both great. And I've always loved the white version of the Sorceress with the, that outfit, probably because of the 87 Masters movie, which has really ingrained that visual in my mind. It is cool how she has transparent wings, but I do prefer these really nice orange and blue ones. Her articulation is exactly what you'd expect with the hinge of the shoulder. The arm can go up and down, of course. There is a single hinge joint at the elbow. You can move it left to right with a rotation. There's a rotation at the wrist. There's hinges at both wrists. The head can move slightly left to right, but it is very encumbered by the headdress back here. You can go down. You can go up slightly. You can go to the waist and twist it. She can do the splits really, really well. She can also get a really good kick with the knee joints. You can get a really nice bend, even though it's just single jointed. There is a rotation at the boot. There is a hinge and a pivot here at the ankle, so you can get some very wide stances. And the last bit of bonus articulation is the wings. Like I said, you can fold them way out if you want to, maybe even further than they're supposed to go like that. Or you can actually have them kind of retract in on themselves, and it looks fine that way. I like having the wings out. It's just more impressive, and it does cool things for the color of the figure. The new paint job had a much bigger impact than I expected it to. Definitely one of my favorite female figures in the line. Next up, we'll be looking at Buzz Off. Here's Buzz Off on the front of the blister card here. And you can see he is the heroic spy in the sky. On the back, we can see a little bit about the wings and about how you can pose him. And we also have this beautiful artwork. Leader of Eternia's bee people in the Andrenids. Buzz Off uses his insect vision to keep an eye on Skeletor's evil plans. And you can see that he is looking very, very classic in this form right here. So many cool things going on with the figure detail-wise, from his like techy little bits that are in the wings back there, which I've always appreciated and seem to suggest that part of this is a battle suit somehow or another. His helmet with the big bug eyes on it. His chest armor, which is just kind of like a honeybee kind of pattern with the stripes. You have his uh, very human looking arms, but then you get to the giant pinchers down here that would make Clawful proud. Here you have his axe weapon. Moving on down, he's got furry underwear. Everybody's got furry underwear. And he has monster feet. He also has monster legs. And from the back, things look cool as well with what almost looks like a backpack, but they don't paint any of the stripes going on it. But that's okay because the wings, especially because they can go down just like this, covers that up a lot of the time. So there's just all sorts of cool little detail bits about the figure. Uh, one of the most interesting things is that you can actually take this helmet off. And here it is just off to itself with the giant bug eyes. Me personally, I've always preferred Buzz Off just looking like this. To me, it looks a lot more natural. The helmet seems to almost cover a lot of the detail of the face. And I definitely want to be able to see it because I think it's an excellent head sculpt. It's very loyal to that original figure. I especially like what they do with the eyes. Uh, he's smiling, which is nice. He almost has a little bit of a vampiric look with his teeth. One unfortunate thing about mine is this odd bit of paint slop right here. A little bit of the paint from that tooth maybe come up and mixed in with the yellow. It's something that I might try to look into fixing or rubbing off, but I'm not really sure. There's also a little bit of paint missing or maybe too much yellow paint over that brown part on the nose. So this one definitely, I suppose, could be more susceptible to some paint problems than most because so much of the face is painted instead of plastic. So it's definitely something for you to keep a lookout for. You may be wondering about the grip that these pinchers can actually have on accessories and if it's any good, it actually is. If you look inside the pincher there, there's kind of a rounded part right in the middle. And all you gotta do is take the accessory and there's a little bit of resistance there and you just push it in and it clicks in and that thing is in there. So you don't have to worry about that. Like I said earlier, the wings are completely posable, so you're able to kind of maneuver them to get lots of different looks with the wings. The one thing that I will say is that it's funny that this wave, three out of four characters have wings. I don't know if that was supposed to be a theme or what, but it's the truth. Probably just one of those funny coincidences, but perhaps this is the winged wave right here. So I do have my Masters of the Universe Classics buzz off on hand, but maybe not in the form you might think. Of course, when they released that head pack later on, I couldn't help myself. I love the 2000X version of Buzz Off, and I switched that head right on there. And so here they are side by side. It's funny, I never really thought of it before, but how much does this look like the Tick, right? The superhero back here? I mean, with the mask and stuff, maybe that's what they were going for. Uh, either way, I think these two look cool together. It's almost like they're brothers or father and son or something. So I think it looks nice. I definitely prefer this guy, but this is still a great throwback to that original figure. And finally, 
Here's Jitsu on the bubble card here. You can see he is looking especially retro, even more so than usually on these figures. He's the evil master of martial arts. On the back, look at that. You can put the sword in his hand and uh, you can twist him into powerful battle positions. You have some of the most epic artwork ever here. Uh, ever searching for an opponent who can match him in combat, Jitsu channels dark energies to enhance his fighting power. Includes comic book. So full disclosure, I'll just tell you, I am a huge fan of Jitsu. I'm not exactly sure what it is about the guy. He's never done my laundry or paid for my lunch or anything, but I just think he's a cool character design. There's a big reason why I saved him for the last review, because I've been looking forward to him the very most. I've always been fascinated by Jitsu's design, whether it was the cool armor or just the neat hair or the, the weapons. I don't know. There's just something about him. Add the back metal, and I'm just all about it. He's just so cool. And they did so many cool things with them in classics as well with that figure, which I always felt was really plussed up. Let's go ahead and talk about this version of the character a little bit. It's definitely way more in line with that original vintage version. You can see that he has all the cool armor, kind of has that red and gold thing going, the red furry shorts, and they even have a gold fur around his boots. Not sure what animal he got that from. He has the gold bracer around one of his hands, kind of glittery sword here that's orange. He has an expression on his face that would be uh, very charitable to call disgruntled, I think. Uh, the guy, he's been on plenty of fish for years online and he still can't find love. Bless his heart, he looks very angry. I think they've done a great job of replicating that original vintage head sculpt. The hair is very impressive with all the detail they put into that. The back of the armor looks wonderful as well. If you can't tell that I'm gushing over a Jitsu figure, then you're just not paying attention. Uh, you have the awesome vac metalized hand here which is just as fantastic as you can imagine. They even have veins sculpted uh, right through the armor there. What's not to love about Jitsu, right? Right. He has the same articulation as all the other ones we saw, and I'm just glad to finally own him in my collection. Now, like I said earlier, this is back metalized right here. So as I've said in other reviews, Mattel has really mastered the back metalization process for the modern day, and they've been doing some excellent, excellent work with their Origins line. And a piece like this is perfect for that process because you don't have a lot of rub on other pieces. So this should be able to stay fairly pristine in the right conditions. Uh, there is no kind of action feature or anything like that, of course, but it's just great how shiny it looks and just all the cool kind of posability options you can get with it. The chest armor is of course removable just like any other chest armor with those little locks right there on the side. And you can see that the chest matches the same color as the arms and the body and all of that, but I don't really see much of a reason to take the chest armor off. Here is Jitsu with his Masters of the Universe Classics counterpart. They did several things in Masters of the Universe Classics to plus this guy up, and that's the only reason that I could say anything negative about this Origins version. One of the things they did was offer this incredible new like sash piece and loincloth piece that really helps make him even more distinct as a character and just gives him a better visual. That's definitely something that I miss with the version that's meant to look like the original. It would have been great if they could have had a piece like this that was included. Another thing they did was they kind of toned down that face just a little bit while still making him, you know, all scowly and everything. And they also toned down that kind of reddish tint to the skin tone. At the time, I always thought that might have been for uh, political correctness reasons. But now I see that with this newly released figure, they uh, they lean on that harder than ever. So, you know, hey, that's, that's not up for me to say. Also, and I've talked about this before with other comparisons with classics, look at this weapon storage on the back here. This is just so great and so modern, and it really makes this feel kind of bare and uh, kind of leaves it behind in the past. But of course, that's to be expected because this is based on that original figure. It's just such a shame to see them kind of abandon some of the strides that they made forward uh, to go for that more retro look. And like I said, I love the retro look, but I definitely think that there's more you can do beyond just giving them good articulation to bring them up to that 2022 standard. I'm not giving them a pass necessarily, but I understand why they left it the way that they did. And of course, it wouldn't be right if I didn't show him alongside of Fisto. In the toy line, it always seemed like these two were meant to be nemeses with each other. I think they look really good together here. They end up kind of having a visual similarity to each other, like a kinship with their face sculpts. They just kind of make them work together almost as a little subset, like a little kind of duo. So I think that helps them a lot. One thing that you will notice, though, is that 
Fisto's hand was developed before Mattel had kind of remastered their vac metalization process. So Fisto just uses that kind of sparkly metallic looking silver fleck paint. Whereas now you've got Jitsu with the actual vac metalized fist. And it makes a world of difference for Jitsu. I feel like it would have made a world of difference for Fisto as well. Uh, I think that would have been cool if they'd done that with Fisto. And they may very well do a new release of the figure where they uh, include that, but they look great together. One slight negative here about Jitsu is that he seems to be less well balanced than the other figures. Just me trying to stand him, and admittedly I have my kind of moss set up here, has been a little challenging as I have several outtakes of him falling over. So that's been a little more challenging than some of the other figures. I think part of it is his hand is throwing it off, but it shouldn't make that big of a difference. And perhaps it's the ankles are just a little weaker than the other figures. So at the end of the day, what can I say? Wave 7 is a really, really fun wave of Masters of the Universe Origins figures. This is definitely one of the most eclectic waves that they've ever done. It seems to have quite a bit of variety here. I think all four of them are worth it in their own way. However, for me, I do believe that the standouts for this one are, of course, my pet favorite Jitsu and the Sorceress. I think they're the two that make the biggest impression and probably the two that people will gravitate towards the most. However, I suppose I shouldn't underestimate those Buzz Off fanboys out there because Buzz Off was by far the hardest to find out of these four. I will say that if there's one in the wave that I think you could probably go without, it's definitely Stratos, like I said earlier. He is meant just for kind of a niche crowd or for somebody who maybe didn't get the original Stratos and they want a new version. Either way, I have to say, I think all four of them look really cool together. And it's really funny how there's almost a flying theme for the wave. But of course, if Jitsu tried to fly, I don't think it's going to work out. Sorry, Jitsu. It's okay. Well, friends, that'll do it for me. Of course, be on the lookout for more Masters of the Universe videos coming very soon, including, like I said, that updated ranking list. I'm going to be very happy to finally get to do that after having a version of it written for so long, but thinking these figures were coming any day. And let me know down below what you think of these figures. And tell me, which one do you think is the very best in the wave? Do you feel the same as I do, that these were kind of delayed and a lot of the online orders didn't get fulfilled? Or did you find these readily? Also, be sure to like the video as it really helps the channel out. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all those upcoming Masters of the Universe videos. And as always, God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. Let's go. Eee. Yes. It's okay. He-Man, hurry, you must go and find the puppet's chicken. Me, I'm the most powerful man in the wilderness. If you get it, you get it. They both have kind of a similarity. It's okay.